this morning on CBS 2 News, keeping kids safe as they head back to school. Why one local district says they're not taking any chances. Plus, calls for and against censorship at our local libraries. Why some want certain books removed from the Meridian Library District. Plus, the Albertsons Boise Open tees off today. How this event could mean a ticket to the big leagues for players. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise on this Thursday, August 18th. It's 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. We did have record heat yesterday and a chance to beat a record setback in 2003. <laughs> Let's bring in Luke Randall for at least a first look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Luke. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, yesterday we tied the record for the most triple digit days in a year. 2003, we had 20 days. Now we have 20 days, and if we break, if we get to 21 days, that is a new record. Right now in Boise, though, 75 degrees, light breeze coming through. And right out now, as you get outside your door, you're going to see how things heat up through the day. Will we get to triple digits right now? Models saying no. They say they're saying. 97 degrees today should be the high, so hopefully we won't hit triple digits. You can see clouds coming through. Some of this will be haze, and we'll talk about that in a bit because it's pretty important. But as you can see, some, um, clouds just moving throughout the Treasure Valley and some scattered showers. Take a look at the high temperatures. You can see 100 in Emmett. They're actually saying 99 on this model in Boise, very close to that triple digit mark, and then 100 degrees in Ontario. We're in for another hot day in the Treasure Valley, and we will talk about that haze in just a moment. No, oh, thank you, Luke. Feeling that a little bit in my lungs this morning, so thank you for mentioning it. About 5.01 this morning on your Thursday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Very quiet out there this morning for this Thursday commute. No reports of anything in your way. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, as school starts back up, safety is at the top of everyone's mind. And at the Garden Valley School District, they're one of the few districts that allow staff to have guns on campus. And with a growing number of school shootings, they say this, among other security measures, is what's helping keep their students and staff safe. CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains. School started this week at the Garden Valley School District. And for Superintendent Randy Thompson, safety is top priority. Well, just like we are in the business of educating our school children, we also recognize the importance of educating ourselves on the issues that are important in today's world. One of them is school safety. Since 2014, Garden Valley has allowed its staff to have guns on campus. The school board has adopted a policy that allows uh, the use of weapons on campus uh, to uh, defend and promote safety as needed. And with recent school shootings, the superintendent says they're not taking any chances. We recognize that from time to time there could be a threat to our school, to our students, our staff, or our faculty and we want to be prepared to address that. The school has taken other precautions to keep their students safe, such as keeping their doors closed. We keep all of our doors secured and locked throughout the school day. And monitoring all visitors that come in and out of the school. You actually have to buzz in, talk to receptionists, Welcome. How can I help you? and they'll give you the green light to actually go in the school. With nearly 300 kids K through 12th grade at the school, all students must communicate with teachers on where they're going after school. And teachers won't allow students to leave with an adult unless they know who they are. Randy says while nothing can ever really prepare you for a school shooting, they do their best to make sure everyone is safe. We feel the need to constantly educate ourselves on those things that we can do to ensure the safety of everyone within the walls of Garden Valley Schools. And we do want to clarify that the Garden Valley School District is only allowed firearms due to its proximity from police and other emergency services in the event of a worst case scenario. Well, switching gears this morning, a shortage of bus drivers impacting schools nationwide. Many retired during the pandemic as online schooling kept kids home. Well, now they say opportunities pushing them towards jobs other than bus driving. Now I'm making more money here. I don't have to go back to driving. That's where the shortage came in. 
Less drivers also means more students and more routes for the drivers that are left. Now for students, that means it'll take longer to get both to and from school. And school sports also suffering this semester. A shortage of referees may mean fewer games. Now refs say they're walking away from the job due to verbal, sometimes even physical abuse from parents following games. They're excited to be there, but they're always very heading out to the parking lot. They don't know who's going to come chasing after them. That shortage may mean changing games from Friday nights to Thursday or Saturday nights when more refs are available. It will ultimately be up to schools to coordinate what they can and can't hold or when they can and cannot hold those games. On to developing news this morning, a packed house last night for the Meridian Library District Board meeting, all over censorship and the content of local library books. The Idaho Liberty Dogs, a conservative group, they want some books removed from the public library, calling them sexually explicit. Now here's some of last night's board meeting. The accusations that libraries are becoming a grooming space to indoctrinate children into the LGBTQ lifestyle. The fact that they put Captain Underpants on the list tells me that they are acting out of willful ignorance or just a surface level understanding of the material they're objecting to. Anyone familiar with Captain Underpants and calling that smut filled and pornographic is baffling. They're targeting a handful of books, plus the series mentioned. Now, many concerned citizens spoke out against local government censorship. The board made no decision on the topic. To see the other titles and more about the meeting, head on over to our website. Well, turning to fire season this morning, the Moose Fire still growing along the Salmon River. So now Salmon River Road closed between Spring Creek and Panther Creek. Crews say at least for two weeks. The, the fire activity has moved down in the last couple of days um, and it has approached today. There's a there's a, the first two structures in the bottom is getting close. But at this time, um, none of our resources have had to take any action of burning around or protecting those structures yet. The fire burning almost 83,000 acres of the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It is sitting at 34 percent contained. Well, closer to home, the battle continues to stop the Four Corners fire. That's in the mountains of West Cascade. The town is not threatened, but incident commanders say that boaters need to stay out of the way of firefighting aircrafts that are scooping up water from the Cascade Reservoir. The Four Corners fire now sitting up at 3,500 acres. Well, happening today, the Albertsons Open tees off. The tournament is a chance to watch some of the best golf in the world and catch some classic musical live acts. Now, the Albertsons Boise Open, basically a qualifier for next year's PGA Tour. It's one of three final events with a winning prize of $1 million. Some nice cash. The top 25 earners at the end of the Corn Ferry Tour move on to the PGA Tour next season. Corn Ferry Tour is the pathway to the PGA Tour. It's really unbelievably stressful for these guys. It's, it's, it's their chance to get on the PGA Tour. Not only can fans enjoy watching professional golf this weekend, the Boise Open also hosting concerts today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Now those concert tickets unfortunately are already sold out, but there are still tickets available for Sunday's final round of golf. What a nice swing. You a golfer? No, I've never <laughs> really got it. I played some other sports like soccer, football. No, never, I don't judge you. I'm a yeah. putt putter, so that's 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 the extent yeah, of my of golf, golf experience. I mean, I'd like I'd like to try Top Golf when it comes to Meridian. Oh. I'm excited for that. Yeah, no, it looks like a lot of fun. I've actually never done that before. So I have never forward. I have never played Top Golf either. I've always yeah. seen it, and I always see people having fun. I yeah. remember the one person a few years ago who they struck the ball, and like as it was in the air, got struck by lightning. That was a cool video. You need to look that up. We're, we're going to have to Google uh, yeah. that, guys. We'll have to do that during the commercial break. <laughs> well, today, a hot day, chance of beating some records, mm -hmm. at least this morning, looking really good as you're heading out the door. Of course, soak in the cooler temperatures. Yeah, yeah when, you're, when you're heading out the door, it should be all right today. But something to note is the haze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you've heard the yes. song Better Days, you know it says living in a haze. Well, we really are living in that today just because of the smoke from various wildfires. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. And I say record breaker here. Right here on the second headline, we might really be in for a record if we get to 100 degrees. And then some storms near the Snake River, probably not going to impact us here in the Treasure Valley, but something to note. So let's talk about that haze right in that red area, you see. We've mostly been fluctuating between the blue or the maybe the light yellow areas, but yeah, we're in the blistering red area. This is from the Moose Fire, the Four Corners Fire, and the various other fires 
burning here in Idaho and it is really dampening our air quality. I went out near Table Rock yesterday and even just looking down toward the city, you could see the haze and it's going to be more obvious today and that's dampening our air quality. You can see our air quality index. This is from about 20 minutes ago, so it might have changed even since then. But we're at 83, which is in that moderate category. We could get up to that sensitive groups category if air quality gets a little bit worse in the Treasure Valley. So we're just in for a lot. You can see satellite and radar. Not too much storm development happening near Boise, but some systems developing. I'm going to show you this is the high pressure system going along. And as you can see, a low pressure system is going to move in, but really it's going to move up into northern Idaho, as you can see, and not play too much of an impact on our weather. So yeah. Lots of haze to look forward to. Well, not to look forward to, but to note. No, definitely keep that in mind. We do have air quality monitors on our website for both Idaho and Oregon. Just stay safe out there, folks. It's 510 on your Thursday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking great out there this morning. Smooth sailing. Not much to talk about. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, there's a new exit plaza to serve people parking at BOI. Now it replaces the old one that's set to be demolished to make way for the new parking structure. So just a heads up as you leave the airport parking, you'll now merge onto the lower roadway and will be looped back to Vista Avenue. Now the new parking garage is expected to be finished in just over a year. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the former vice president speaking out against fellow Republicans who he's defending after the search of former President Trump's home. Plus, several Idaho officers receiving the state's highest honor for serving their community. Well, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 10 billion of these are thrown away each and every year and never even used. The answer, condiment packets. Oh, I'm guilty of this, guys. I try to use them all, but I do have a drawer dedicated to them up in the newsroom. I'm sure you guys have that in your office as well. Well, now for today's question. Nearly everyone uses one of these every day, but 20% of people haven't got a new one in over 10 years. All right, folks, what is it? Well, let's venture north a little bit up in Cascade, right where the Four Corners fire is burning. 94 degrees today, lots of smoke, 56 in the evening and then 88 tomorrow. A lot of that smoke from the Four Corners fire. Then heading east on I-84, you can see 100 degrees and smoke today in Mountain Home. A little bit less smoke in the evening and tomorrow, 94 degrees and partly cloudy. That's rural weather. Back to you. Thank you, Luke. It is 515. Former Vice President Mike Pence warning his fellow Republicans against politicizing the FBI. That's in wake of the search of former President Trump's Florida home. Now, this comes as Trump associates face growing legal scrutiny in multiple investigations. Bradley Blackburn has the latest. At an appearance in New Hampshire, former Vice President Mike Pence came to the defense of the FBI, which some members of the Republican Party say should be defunded, angry at the search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. These attacks on the FBI must stop. Calls to defund the FBI are just as wrong as calls to defund the police. The former vice president, who was at odds with Trump over January 6th, also now says he would consider testifying before the committee investigating the attack on the Capitol. If ever any formal invitation rendered to us, we'd give it due consideration. But my first obligation is to continue to uphold my oath. More Trump associates are facing legal questions. In Georgia, Trump's former personal attorney Rudy Giuliani appeared before a grand jury that's investigating interference in the 2020 election. Do you believe President Trump is the ultimate target of this investigation? I'm not going to comment on the grand jury investigation. In New York, the chief financial officer of the Trump organization, Alan Weisselberg, is expected to plead guilty later today in a tax fraud case. And the Associated Press reports part of the plea deal could include him testifying when the Trump organization goes on trial in October on related charges. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. And in federal court today, a judge will hear an argument from several media organizations, including CBS News, asking for the release of that affidavit justifying the FBI's search of Mar-a-Lago. 
Now, the Department of Justice has said unsealing it would compromise ongoing investigations. There are also reports that Trump is considering releasing security camera footage from Mar-a-Lago from the day of that search. Well, back here in Idaho, several law enforcement officers receiving the state's highest honor. They were given the Idaho Medal of Honor at the state Idaho State Capitol. These three officers, one retired, two active from the Boise Police Department. Now, also honored were an Idaho County Sheriff Deputy, a Napa police officer, and a Caldwell police officer. Head to IdahoNews.com to read more about their heroic, heroic efforts that each earned them these medals. And thank you all for your service. Well, switching gears, the countdown is on for Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Now, flights begin August 31st with Kids Day. Now, that runs Labor Day weekend. It's free and takes place at Ann Morrison Park. Of course, CBS2 is your home for exclusive Spirit of Boise coverage. Now, we'll be live there each day starting on the 31st. To learn more, just head on over to IdahoNews.com. Uh, love Night Glow. Excited for that. I don't, I'm excited for just all of you guys to be able to experience it. You know, not only you guys at home, but also some of the, the people coming in. Like you, of course, yeah. Luke, never uh, been there before. A lot of new faces yeah. at the station and especially in Boise. Yeah. I've never seen it, to be honest, but um, I've seen, I mean, I've seen hot air balloons before, but something like this, just like right next to a city, I mean, I think it'll be a really cool thing to oh, experience. Oh, yeah. It's going to be beautiful. Can't wait for that sunrise, too. That's probably the best mm -hmm. part overall. But are, are you scared of heights? That's the one thing I need to ask people. No, not really. So, so would yeah. you consider ever going up in a balloon oh sure for sure i like this yeah. okay hey i like it yeah. maybe might make your dreams come true hey, in we, a week we can, or so we can, hey, we can mark help. your calendars all right well these smoky skies continuing to move on yeah. in these people with sensitive lungs like myself just be ready for it are we expecting a little bit more where's our air quality at right now well right now our air quality is around 83 which is uh in that moderate category not quite in that sensitive groups category but looking at the headlines you can kind of see what we're dealing with we're really just living in a bit of a haze today just because of all the smoke from the various wildfires, the Moose Fire and the Four Corners Fire doing a big deal on our environment right now. You see a record breaker in the second box right here. That's if we hit 100 degrees today. Right now we're looking at around 99, 98. So definitely possible if we hit that 21 triple digit days this year, the hottest summer on record, at least with triple or triple digit days. That'd be 21 days of 100 degree plus weather. And then storms near the Snake River probably won't in impact us, but something to note. Taking a look outside Boise right now, you can see 75 degrees, pretty calm right now. Our high temperatures for today, hottest in the region, Emmett and Ontario, both 100. Now let's get to that extended forecast so you can see what's going on. Today, hazy conditions over the Treasure Valley, 99 degrees. Things cool down Friday with some partly cloudy conditions. And then in the weekend warms up 98 on Sunday before being a little bit more mellow mid 90s for the start of next week. And then you head on over up into the mountains. You can see a lot more smoke because you're closer to the fires. 94 and 88 degrees weekend. It'll be upper 80s and then a little bit more chill mid to um, yeah, mid 80s and it'll be a little bit better in the mountains. Yeah, got that living in a hay song stuck in my head now, Luke. Ah, all right, it is 520 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there at I-84 this morning. Few more headlights, but everything is rolling on along. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, the CDC changing things up after a new report. What they say they're going to focus on after several pandemic response missteps. Plus, new COVID boosters may be available soon as officials try to get them out before the next virus surge. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News This Morning. It's 523. Welcome back. A shakeup coming for the Centers for Disease Control. This is after a review pointed to several missteps in how it handled the COVID pandemic. Now, a report out Wednesday finds the CDC had become too rigid and too bureaucratic to act quickly. It specifically cited its analysis of data, the sluggish release of information to the public, and its confusing and overwhelming coronavirus guidance. 
We learned some hard lessons over the last three years, and as part of that, it's my responsibility, it's the agency's responsibility to learn from those lessons and do better. In the coming months, Dr. Walensky says the CDC, they'll focus on getting more information to the public more rapidly, developing a more nimble workforce, they say, and addressing equity in health care. The White House wants to speed up the timeline for the next round of COVID booster shots. Medical reporter Liz Bonet shares what that means if you haven't gotten a fourth shot. Hey there, everybody. The rapid shift of the variants has been a moving target for infectious disease specialists. The mission now is to speed up the delivery of these newly formulated boosters ahead of a potential late fall and early winter surge. The newest batch of boosters headed your way will include what 90% of people are getting sick with right now, according to the CDC, the BA4 and BA5 Omicron variants. It's going to be really important that people this fall and winter get the new shot. It's, it's designed for the virus that's out there. The U.S. has purchased more than 170 million doses of these Omicron boosters from Pfizer and Moderna. A fourth dose of the original boosters has been recommended for those ages 50 and older. Fewer than half of those eligible have had this extra dose, according to the CDC. So if you're young and otherwise healthy, it may be better to wait for these newer shots to be available this fall. The hope is that the newer vaccines will continue to keep most people out of the hospital, as it's been with BA4 and 5 infections now. Although there's a lot of COVID in the community, people aren't getting sick enough to get admitted for the most part. The shots could be available, according to the White House COVID-19 response team, in as little as three weeks. But by the time we can get them, we don't know if BA4 and BA5 will still be making us sick. I think we're hitting the peak on the BA5 wave right now, so the numbers haven't really gone up in the community over the last two weeks. They haven't gone down yet, but they're steady. You see, as kids head back to school and classes begin at colleges and universities, the hope is that an ever-evolving virus won't find so many new hosts that even a new and improved vaccine can't fight it. Now, if you do get a fourth shot with the current vaccine right now, the concern is that you won't respond to these newer formulations expected in just a few weeks, and that would mean maybe perhaps you're not as protected as possible as we head into a potential surge. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come on CBS 2 News this midday, fights against wildfires here in Idaho progressing. Why the Moose Fire may keep Salmon River Road closed a little while longer. And here's what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. 7 o'clock, we have Young Sheldon, 7.30, Ghosts, and at 8 o'clock, Big Brother. Then you can join Brent Hunsaker, Roland Stedham, and Janae Ryan for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question is, Nearly everyone uses one of these every day, but 20% of people haven't gotten a new one in over 10 years. All right, what is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, keeping kids safe as they head back to school. Why one local district says they're not taking any chances. Plus, calls for and against censorship at our local libraries. Why some want certain books removed from the Meridian Library District. Plus, the Albertsons Boise Open tees off today. How this event could mean a big ticket for these big leagues for the players. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning. Marcos Guadarrama is out now in San Diego living his best life. But here in Boise, 75 degrees, a little bit of breeze coming through. Today, things will heat up, hopefully not to triple digits. We'll talk about why that would be a huge deal in just a bit. You can see 97, the projected high right there at around 5 p.m. So it's going to get pretty hot still. You can see partly cloudy conditions for most of today. You can see the clouds coming up. We'll talk about why some of these clouds are actually smoke in a bit. We can't really see that. But again, another look at your high temperatures for today. 99 in Boise, 100 in Emmett, 100 in Ontario, all around the Treasure Valley. It is going to be very, very hot. So yeah, we're going to be living in a haze. Record temperatures today. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Now, some storms near the Snake River. There is a lot of thunderstorm activity projected to happen there today. 
probably won't be dealing with it in the Treasure Valley. So hopefully we should be good on that front. Back to you. Now, thank you so much, Luke. We appreciate you being up here bright and bushy tailed this early in the morning. Hope you all are waking up on the right side of the bed. It is 531 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, not much happening out there to report as far as slowing you down. It's looking good, smooth sailing. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. As school starts back up, safety, it's at the top of everyone's mind. And the Garden Valley School District, they're one of the few districts that allow staff to have guns on campus. And with the growing number of school shootings, they say this, among other security measures, that's what's helping keep their students and staff safe. Our own CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains. School started this week at the Garden Valley School District. And for Superintendent Randy Thompson, safety is top priority. Well, just like we are in the business of educating our school children, we also recognize the importance of educating ourselves on the issues that are important in today's world. One of them is school safety. Since 2014, Garden Valley has allowed its staff to have guns on campus. The school board has adopted a policy that allows uh, the use of weapons on campus uh, to uh, defend and promote safety as needed. And with recent school shootings, the superintendent says they're not taking any chances. We recognize that from time to time there could be a threat to our school, to our students, our staff, or our faculty, and we want to be prepared to address that. The school has taken other precautions to keep their students safe, such as keeping their doors closed. We keep all of our doors secured and locked throughout the school day and monitoring all visitors that come in and out of the school. You actually have to buzz in, talk to receptionists, Welcome. How can I help you? and they'll give you the green light to actually go in the school. With nearly 300 kids K through 12th grade at the school, all students must communicate with teachers on where they're going after school. And teachers won't allow students to leave with an adult unless they know who they are. Randy says while nothing can ever really prepare you for a school shooting, they do their best to make sure everyone is safe. We feel the need to constantly educate ourselves on those things that we can do to ensure the safety of everyone within the walls of Garden Valley Schools. And I do want to clarify that Garden Valley is only allowed firearms due to its proximity from police and other EMS services in the event of a worst case scenario. Well, a shortage of bus drivers now impacting schools nationwide. Many retired during the pandemic as online schooling kept kids at home. But now they say better opportunities are pushing them towards jobs other than bus driving. Now I'm making more money here. I don't have to go back to driving. That's where the shortage came in. Less drivers also means more students and more routes for those drivers left. And for students, that means it'll take longer to get both to and from school. And school sports also suffering this semester. A shortage of referees may mean fewer games. Now, refs say they're walking away from the job due to verbal, even sometimes physical abuse from parents at games. They're excited to be there, but they're always very heading out to the parking lot. They don't know who's going to come chasing after them. This shortage may mean changing games from Friday nights to Thursday or Saturday nights when more refs are available. It will ultimately be up to schools to coordinate when they can and can't hold games. Now to developing news, a packed house last night for the Meridian Library District's board meeting, all over censorship and the content of local library books. Now the Idaho Liberty Dogs, a conservative group, they want some books removed from the public library, calling them sexually explicit. Now here are some of last night's board meeting. The accusations that libraries are becoming a grooming space to indoctrinate children into the LGBTQ lifestyle. The fact that they put Captain Underpants on the list tells me that they are acting out of willful ignorance or just a surface level understanding of the material they're objecting to. Anyone familiar with Captain Underpants and calling that smut filled and pornographic is baffling. They're trying to target a handful of books, plus that series mentioned. Now, many concerned citizens spoke out against local government censorship. The board made no decision on the topic. You can see the other titles and more about the meeting. Just head on over to our website. 
Turning to fire season this morning, the Moose Fire still growing along the Salmon River. So now the Salmon River Road closed between Spring Creek and Panther Creek. Crews say it will last at least two weeks. The, the fire activity has moved down in the last couple of days um, and it has approached today. There's a there's a, the first two structures in the bottom is getting close. But at this time, um, none of our resources have had to take any action of burning around or protecting those structures yet. The fire now burning almost 83,000 acres in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It is 34 percent contained as of this morning. A little closer to home, the battle continues to stop the Four Corners fire. It's in the mountains west of Cascade. The town not threatened, but incident commanders, they say boaters need to keep out of the way of firefighting aircrafts that are scooping up water from the Cascade Reservoir. The Four Corners fire now up to about 3,500 acres. And happening today, the Boise Albertsons Open tees off the tournament. It's a chance to watch some of the best golf in the world and catch some live music. Now, the Albertsons Boise Open, basically a qualifier for next year's PGA Tour. It's one of three final events with a winning prize of $1 million. Yeah, nice little chunk of change. Now, the top 25 earners at the end of the Corn Ferry Tour move up to the PGA Tour. That's next season. Corn Ferry Tour is the pathway to the PGA Tour. It's really unbelievably stressful for these guys. It's, it's, it's their chance to get onto the PGA Tour. Not only can fans enjoy watching professional golf this weekend, the Boise Open also hosting concerts today, tomorrow and Saturday. Now, concert tickets, unfortunately, are already sold out, but there are still tickets available for Sunday's final round of golf. Now, lots of fun out there. Excited for some of actually the bands as well. I don't know. I, I, oh, for sure. I, I enjoy golf. My, my grandfather was a golfer, so I watched a oh, lot of golf. Okay, that makes sense. But, uh, but don't know much about it, so I'm just, I'm just going to call myself out there. Yeah, and I know there's like the whole controversy with like the live golf versus PGA right now. Oh, I don't know if you're following that. Yeah, we have reported on it a little bit, so, mm -hmm. you know, learning more yeah. day by day. But yeah, all the concerts going on. I mean, train, mm -hmm. just lots of good bands, like lots mm -hmm. of up and coming bands too. So it's exciting just to go out there and even enjoy it, even if you don't really like golf that much. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you're definitely going to want to stay cool. That's really what we're looking at because temperatures still hot, record breaking highs possible today. For sure. If we get up to triple digits today, that's actually going to break a uh, record. That record being the most amount of triple digit days in a year. In 2003, we had 20 days, 100 and up. We've tied that. Yesterday, we actually hit that. And if we get to 100 degrees today, 21 days, well, that's a new all time record since we've been keeping records. Now, living in a haze, like the song, well, we're literally living in a haze today because there's a lot of smoke from various fires pretty near us, even with the Four Corners fire in Cascade. Storms near the Snake River, probably not going to impact us. Look at the smoke now. You can see we're in that red area just about. We've not really been in that area for such a sustained amount of time. I don't know if you saw yesterday uh, up near. I was up near Table Rock and a lot of smoke up there. You could see just the haze over the Treasure Valley even more prevalent today just because of how much smoke we're dealing with from all these fires. That's having an impact on our air quality. You can see 83. We're in that moderate category. We're nearly in that sensitive groups category. I imagine at some point today there will be little blips where we are in that category. So just be careful if you're going outside looking at the satellite and radar. Not much storm development near Boise, but a lot over there up in Reno. And then you can see we're just going to be dealing with a high pressure system for most of the time. There will be a low pressure system coming in. You can see it's working its way over, but it's not really going to hit us that much. More going to be in northern Idaho. It will cool us down a little bit. All right, Luke, I'm taking you up on that. Even if it's a little bit, we will take it. It's 540 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. No reports of anything. Again, slowing you down, looking good out there. Hope you all are having a great morning. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Excuse me. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is nearly everyone uses one of these every day, but 20% of people haven't gotten a new one in over 10 years. All right, I'm thinking a hairbrush. I hope it's not a toothbrush. 
<laughs> See, I was thinking, I said, I yeah. hope it's not a razor. That was in my mind. Oh, no. <laughs> see, we're just worst case scenarioing this morning. All right, folks, let's see what you have to say at home this morning. Yeah, a brush, a hair comb. The good news is, I guess you can't always boil them. I know uh, that's a good way to clean them. I guess. Uh, I don't know. All right, let's see what else. Bear, oh, a coffee pot, Barry. That actually could be it. Oh, that might be oh. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. My mind's going on all sorts of <laughs> tangents with a coffee pot. Oh, I can't even imagine. All right, James, a vehicle. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good one, too. I like all of these. Some creative ones, even if they're making me cringe. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, we still have about an hour and 15 minutes. Wait, did you guess, by the way, Luke? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's a toothbrush, but I don't know. I'll, I'll come up with something better in a little bit. All right, guys, we'll put our thinking caps on. And if you think you know the answer, you can still guess on our Facebook page or our Twitter. And of course, we will read some more of your guesses and the answer right before CBS this morning. Still to come on CBS 2 News, trying to cool off heat islands how some states are addressing some of their hottest areas. Well, if you're going up into the mountains today, Idaho City, you're going to be dealing with a lot of smoke. You can see most of that from the wildfires, 97 degrees, 55 tonight and 91 partly cloudy tomorrow, a little bit less smoky. Fairfield, you're in for a lot of smoke. You can see 93 today, 53 in the evening and tomorrow again, 85 degrees and smoky conditions. Oh, thank you, Luke. They will be ready for that. It is 545. Cooling kits are being given out in Multnomah County, Oregon, as the area deals with more intense heat. Yeah, it's not just us folks. Now, officials there working on addressing the county's heat islands. That's areas with a lot of concrete and asphalt and not a lot of shade. We have a great map that shows what even just planting trees on a street can do to lower the temperature. It's it's dramatic. Yes, it is. The counties they've been planning the county has been planting trees in low income and low canopy areas. They're also buying AC units for people who live in homes without air conditioning. Now, the budget that Multnomah County just passed includes money for an additional 1000 units. And Oregon, not the only state trying to address heat islands. Now, one neighborhood in Pacoima, California, is feeling much cooler thanks to a cool community project. Joy Benedict explains. As the sun soaks the Southland, heat radiates from the asphalt, and many are searching for shade. But at this park in Pacoima, summer feels a little different. It's not too hot like it used to be. It's much cooler. That's because the 10-block area surrounding Hubert Humphrey Park is part of a project to fight urban heat, and those who live nearby can tell a difference. I think it's about a 20% more cooler here than there. That much different? Yeah, a lot. All the asphalt, the parking lots, and the pavement have been coated with Street Bond, a solar reflective treatment. My feet do feel cooler. They do feel cooler, yes. <laughs> you can definitely instantly feel the difference. Um, from the soles of your feet. Yeah. Melanie Torres is with Pacoima Beautiful. I think it's great. I, you know, Pacoima is one of like the largest hot zones in LA, so it's really nice that we were fortunate enough to be selected. The community was selected by GAF to be a cool community project. The roofing and waterproofing manufacturer picked this neighborhood to test out its product and see if they can literally lower the temperature over the course of a year. It, it limits uh, uh, the amount of heat and energy absorption into those hard surfaces. Jeff Terry is the vice president of sustainability. He says if they can keep the surface cooler during the day, our bodies and buildings won't have to work as hard to cool off overnight. Those buildings and homes have to keep working harder and harder. So what happens with that is you get increased energy use, you get increased uh, carbon impact associated with that. This project actually started last month, but with one million square feet of surfaces now covered, we thought we'd put it to the test. It is 5 p.m. and still 93 degrees here in the city of Pacoima. However, this thermometer registers the street at closer to 130 degrees. However, if I continue to walk onto the now treated area of the asphalt, you can see that temperature drop significantly. And we've seen results of it going down by like 9 to 10 degrees already. And in this neighborhood where every home is an air conditioned, those few degrees can make a big impact on health and finances. We find other ways to kind of mitigate the heat, um, but there's not a lot of options that we have here in our community. 
Switching gears, the 125th Western Idaho Fair kicking off tomorrow. It runs through the 28th. Now there'll be animals on display, carnival rides and entertainment. Also, last year's winning beer available at vendors all over the fairgrounds. The concerts, they begin on Monday. Here's a rundown of the headliners each night. Now the best news, these concerts are completely free with your paid admission to the Western Idaho Fair. And even better opening day is CBS 2's Free Fair Friday. You can get in free from noon until 2 o'clock. All we ask is that you bring a couple of cans of non-perishable food for the Idaho Food Bank and you're in free. Just be there before 2 again this Friday from noon to 2. And if you can't make it to the fair, you can always donate online to help feed hungry Idahoans. We do have a link on IdahoNews.com. Excited for all that the fair has to offer. Yeah, but staying cool will be the name of the game. So are we looking at triple digit temperatures over the weekend? Kind of what can we expect for our folks trying to you know plan out their weekend? Thankfully, it doesn't look like we're going to be dealing with triple digit temperatures. I mean, we were dealing with them the last few days, especially <laughs> yesterday. It was just so hot. Um, but today is our best chance of triple digits, and that could bring a record. And that record is the most amount of days in a summer where you have triple digit temperatures. Previously, that record stood at 20 days back in 2003. Now we've tied it. We tied it yesterday. We're at 20 days. And if we get to 21 today, well, that is a huge record for just how hot it is. We're living in a haze today, though. Hopefully not tomorrow when the fair kicks off. Most of that haze being brought on by the wildfires here in Idaho. And then some storms near the Snake River really not going to have much of an impact on us. Right now in Boise, you can see 75 degrees, a little bit cooler, but we are dealing with some of that haze, even though you cannot see it. High temperatures for today, 99 in Boise. We're almost at that triple digit mark, 100 in Emmett, 100 in Ontario, and 94 in McCall. Here's a look at your extended forecast. I'll jump out of the way. You can see 99 degrees and hazy on Thursday. That's today. Then going into the weekend, you can see 96 and 98 degrees. We warm up, cool down a little bit going into next week. You can see mid 90s. We'll take that. 93 degrees on Tuesday, 94 on Wednesday. Up into the mountains, similar story, but a lot more haze because you're closer to those wildfires, especially in Cascade with the new Four Corners fighter. You can see 94 today, then on Friday things cool down a little bit. Jump up in the weekend to 89 degrees and then mid 80s for the rest or for the start of next week. No, thank you, Luke. Looking forward to a little bit of relief. It is 551 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look this morning out there. Everything rolling on along. Yeah, not much to talk about. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, a popular pandemic drink fizzling out. Why sales of seltzers are going down. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 5.54. Welcome back. During the pandemic, hard seltzer saw a huge increase in popularity. But now there's something new on tap. Dina Demetrius explains. Um, Apple Pay, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Eddie Muchamel manages Village Market and Liquors in Los Angeles and says business boomed in 2020. During the pandemic, everything was selling like crazy. With bars and restaurants closed, Americans drank more at home, and sales of hard seltzer skyrocketed even when people started socializing again. Like if I go to a party, it's usually Trulies and White Claws and then maybe some beers, but those are definitely the dominant drink of choice. Dozens of new hard seltzer brands have popped up in the past couple of years, but after a huge rise, sales are now starting to fizzle, down 10% this year. There's always a um, product life cycle. John Berg with Nielsen IQ says while seltzers remain very popular, another drink is taking up space at stores. Those shoppers that had been uh, trying hard seltzers are now trying the uh, cocktails. Canned cocktails contain spirits like vodka or whiskey, where hard seltzers are malt-based like beer. Sales for the ready-to-drink products are taking off, up 55% this year. 
and we were really ready for this canned cocktail moment. Sam Calagione is the founder of Dogfish Head Brewery, which started as a beer company but has extended into canned cocktails. Dogfish is owned by Boston Beer. The company known for Sam Adams also makes the popular hard seltzer Truly, and now Truly is branching out. We've already announced that we're going to come out with a line of Truly vodka seltzers, so kind of playing in this interesting white space between what was a traditional seltzer and sort of a vodka soda uh, cocktail. Canned cocktails are creating buzz, but analysts say trends can shift as tastes change. Dina Demetrius, CBS News, Los Angeles. Americans are finally catching a break when it comes to chicken wings. Now, according to the Department of Agriculture, the average wholesale price of a pound of wings fell to 168 in July. That's their lowest since 2018 before the pandemic. Now, analysts predict those prices may be short-lived with football and basketball season just around the corner, boosting demand once again. Still to come on CBS 2 News, fights against wildfires here in Idaho are progressing. Why the Moose Fire may keep the Salmon River Road closed a while longer. Plus, the former vice president speaking out against fellow Republicans, who he's defending after the search of former President Trump's home. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, keeping kids safe as they head back to school. Why one local district says they're not taking any chances. Plus, calls for and against censorship at our local libraries. Why some want certain books removed from the Meridian Library District. Plus, the Albertsons Boise Open tees off today. How this event could mean a ticket to the big leagues for players. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live picture for you in downtown Boise on this Thursday, August 18th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. We did have record breaking heat as of yesterday. A chance to break records once again today, but looking nice out there, at least this morning. Let's bring in Luke Randall for your first look forecast. Good morning, Luke. Good morning. Right now, a little bit better, at least temperature wise. What you can't see is the haze, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Right now, though, 72 degrees, you can see a light breeze coming through, so a little bit better. Outside, when you get it right out the door, it's going to warm up quickly, but probably not to 100 degrees. We're right teetering in that range where it could. You can see 97 degrees by about 5 p.m. today, warming up pretty quickly. Looking at the clouds, you can see a lot of clouds making their way through up into southwest Idaho. Some storm development actually probably won't be a factor. You might see something, but Honestly, not much to actually deal with. You can see right now the projection for Boise actually 98 degrees, 100 in Emmett, 100 in Ontario. We're just in for a very hot day today, a very hazy day. So we'll talk about that in a little bit because just all the smoke from the wildfires is just coming right down into the Treasure Valley. Again, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Oh, thank you, Luke. It is 601 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there this morning. No reports of much to stand in your way. Hope you guys are having a good morning. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, as school starts back up, safety is at the top of everyone's mind. Now, the Garden Valley School District, they're one of the few districts in Idaho that allows staff to have guns on campus. And with the growing number of school shootings, they say it's among this, among other security measures, is what's helping keep their students and staff safe. Michaela Elich explains. School started this week at the Garden Valley School District. And for Superintendent Randy Thompson, Safety is top priority. Well, just like 
we are in the business of educating our school children. We also recognize the importance of educating ourselves on the issues that are important in today's world. One of them is school safety. Since 2014, Garden Valley has allowed its staff to have guns on campus. The school board has adopted a policy that allows uh, the use of weapons on campus uh, to uh, defend and promote safety as needed. And with recent school shootings, the superintendent says they're not taking any chances. We recognize that from time to time there could be a threat to our school, to our students, our staff, or our faculty, and we want to be prepared to address that. The school has taken other precautions to keep their students safe, such as keeping their doors closed. We keep all of our doors secured and locked throughout the school day and monitoring all visitors that come in and out of the school. You actually have to buzz in, talk to receptionists, Welcome. How can I help you? and they'll give you the green light to actually go in the school. With nearly 300 kids K through 12th grade at the school, all students must communicate with teachers on where they're going after school. And teachers won't allow students to leave with an adult unless they know who they are. Randy says while nothing can ever really prepare you for a school shooting, they do their best to make sure everyone is safe. We feel the need to constantly educate ourselves on those things that we can do to ensure the safety of everyone within the walls of Garden Valley Schools. And we do want to clarify that the Garden Valley School District is only allowed firearms due to its proximity from police and other emergency services in the event of a worst case scenario. Well, a shortage of bus drivers impacting schools nationwide. Many retired during the pandemic as online schooling kept kiddos at home. Now they say better opportunities are pushing them towards jobs other than bus driving. Now I'm making more money here. I don't have to go back to driving. That's where the shortage came in. Less drivers also means more students and more routes for those drivers that are left. For students, it means it'll take longer to get both to and from school. Now to developing news, a packed house last night for Meridian Library District's board meeting, all over censorship and the content of local library books. The Idaho Liberty Dogs, a conservative group, wants some books removed from the public library, calling them sexually explicit. Now here's some of last night's board meeting. The accusations that libraries are becoming a grooming space to indoctrinate children into the LGBTQ lifestyle. The fact that they put Captain Underpants on the list tells me that they are acting out of willful ignorance or just a surface level understanding of the material they're objecting to. Anyone familiar with Captain Underpants and calling that smut filled and pornographic is baffling. Now they're targeting a handful of books, plus that series mentioned. Many concerned citizens spoke out against local government censorship, though the board made no decisions on the topic. You can see the other titles and more about the meeting on our website. Turning now to fire season, the Moose Fire still growing along the Salmon River. So now Salmon River Road is closed between Spring Creek and Panther Creek. Crews say for at least two weeks. The, the fire activity has moved down in the last couple of days um, and it has approached today. There's a there's a, the first two structures in the bottom is getting close. But at this time, um, none of our resources have had to take any action of burning around or protecting those structures yet. Now, the fire burning almost 83,000 acres in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's 34 percent contained as of this morning. And a little closer to home, the battle continues to stop the Four Corners fire. That's burning in the mountains west of Cascade. The town is, isn't threatened, but incident commanders, they say boaters need to keep out of the way of firefighting aircrafts that are scooping up water from Cascade Reservoir. Now the Four Corners fire is now up to 3,500 acres. Well, happening today, the Boise, the Albertsons Boise Open tees off. The tournament, it's a chance to watch some of the best golf in the world and catch some live music. Now, the Albertsons Boise Open is basically a qualifier for next year's PGA Tour. It's one of three final events with a winning prize of $1 million. That's a chunk of change. Now, the top 25 earners at the end of the Corn Ferry Tour, they move on to the PGA Tour next season. Corn Ferry Tour is the pathway to the PGA Tour. It's really unbelievably stressful for these guys. It's, it's, it's their chance to get on the PGA Tour. 
Not only can fans enjoy watching professional golf this weekend, the Boise Open also hosting concerts today, tomorrow and Saturday. Now concert tickets unfortunately are already sold out, but there's still plenty of tickets available for Sunday's final round of golf. Oh, love to be able to see those blue skies out there in that video. Yeah, something we're not going to see as much of for today. Yeah, today we're going to be dealing with <laughs> sad. <laughs> I know. All right. uh, we're going to be dealing with a lot of haze. You can't really see it right now because it's dark, but as things warm up or as the sun comes up, you're just going to see a lot of haze in the atmosphere. Unfortunately, we really are living in a lot of smoke and haze today. That's just because of all the fires burning all around Idaho. The Moose Fire and the Four Corners Fire, especially prevalent, just giving us all that haze. Record breaking temperatures today, not a high, but if we do get to 100 degrees, which were projected around 98, 99, if we do get to 100 though, that'll be 21 days this summer of triple digit temperatures breaking the all time record set back in 2003. Right now we're tied with that. Storms near the Snake River probably shouldn't affect us, but there could be a little thunderstorm that blips through your area. This is the smoke that I'm talking about. Look, we're right in that red area. For the most of the time we've been in like the blue or the yellow, but yeah, that red is just staying around. You can see it moves in right there. It is just kind of going right over us, dampening the air quality. You can see air quality index showing 83 right now, which is in that moderate category. We could even see as we get into that like red going into the sensitive groups category, probably not unhealthy, but we might be in that sensitive groups category. You can see not too much storm development happening at, over the satellite radar near us. You can see more in Nevada, Oregon, but here is a look at the high pressure system that we're dealing with the next couple of days. You can see it's just moving along slowly up in northern, uh, up into Canada near Calgary, and then a low pressure system kind of makes its way over, cooling us down a little bit. We're going to talk about that, or we're going to see that reflected in the temperatures next week as they start to cool down into the mid 90s. Never thought I'd be so happy to see the mid 90s. Thank you, Luke. It is 610 on your Thursday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. Bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking out there this morning, looking pretty good. So when you do get in the car, actually, no, hold on. Sorry about that. Ron O'Brien here with a News Talk Traffic Center update. Sorry about that, Ron. On a roll this morning. How are you doing? How's it looking out there? We're uh, doing all right. Everything quiet at this stage. 84 East and West of Boise. Running light. Typically, that's the case this time of the morning. Uh, in case you uh, missed it, recently 10 Mile is open near Victory. You can get through one lane each direction. Reduced speed limit still about 25 through there. Victory is closed, though, either side of 10 Mile. But uh, at least uh, 10 Mile open in that area. You can uh, well, make a little progress in that area. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. No, thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, you want to make sure you turn your dial to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And just a note, if you're heading to the Boise Airport, an exit plaza to serve people parking at BOI, it's going to replace the old one that's set to be demolished to make way for a new parking structure. So now as you leave airport parking, you'll now merge onto the lower roadway and be looped back to Vista Avenue. Now the new parking garage is expected to be finished in just over a year. You can find more info on IdahoNews.com. Well, straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the former vice president speaking out against fellow Republicans who he's defending after the search of former President Trump's home. Plus, several Idaho officers receiving the state's highest honor for serving their community. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 10 billion of these are thrown away each year, never even used. The answer, condiment packets. Yeah, I have a whole drawer full of them. I'm sure many of you do too. Now let's take a look at today's or today's question. Not quite the answer yet. Nearly everyone uses one of these every day, but 20% of people haven't got a new one in over 10 years. All right, folks, what is it? Well, for our friends up in Cascade, sorry you have to deal with all that smoke from the Four Corners fire near you guys. 94 degrees today in Cascade, 56 in the evening, and 88 tomorrow. 
pretty smoky up in Cascade, at least for the time being. Mountain Home, if you're going east on I-84, 100 degrees today. A little bit less smoke tonight, though, 68 degrees. And then partly cloudy conditions, 94 degrees tomorrow. Thank you, Luke. It is 615. Former Vice President Mike Pence warning his fellow Republicans against politicizing the FBI. That's in wake of the search of former President Trump's Florida home. Now it comes as Trump associates face growing legal scrutiny in multiple investigations. Now Bradley Blackburn has the latest. At an appearance in New Hampshire, former Vice President Mike Pence came to the defense of the FBI, which some members of the Republican Party say should be defunded, angry at the search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. These attacks on the FBI must stop. Calls to defund the FBI are just as wrong as calls to defund the police. The former vice president, who was at odds with Trump over January 6th, also now says he would consider testifying before the committee investigating the attack on the Capitol. If ever any formal invitation rendered to us, we'd give it due consideration. But my first obligation is to continue to uphold my oath. More Trump associates are facing legal questions. In Georgia, Trump's former personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, appeared before a grand jury that's investigating interference in the 2020 election. Do you believe President Trump is the ultimate target of this investigation? I'm not going to comment on the grand jury investigation. In New York, the chief financial officer of the Trump organization, Alan Weisselberg, is expected to plead guilty later today in a tax fraud case. And the Associated Press reports part of the plea deal could include him testifying when the Trump organization goes on trial in October on related charges. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Well, in federal court today, a judge will hear an argument from several media organizations, including CBS News, asking for the release of that affidavit that justified the FBI's Mar-a-Lago search. Now, the Department of Justice has said unsealing it could compromise the ongoing investigations. Now, there are also reports that Trump is considering releasing security camera footage from Mar-a-Lago from the day of that search. Back here in Idaho, several law enforcement officers receiving the state's highest honor. Now, they were given the Idaho Medal of Honor at the state capitol. These three officers, one retired, two active from the Boise Police Department, also honored an Idaho County Sheriff's deputy, a Nampa police officer, and a Caldwell police officer. You can go to IdahoNews.com to read more about their heroic, heroic efforts that earned them each their medals. And a thank you all for their service. Well, mark your calendars. The Spirit of Boise Bloom Classic taking flight beginning August 31st with Kids Day. It runs through Labor Day weekend. It's free and takes place at Ann Morrison Park each morning. Now, CBS2 is your television home for exclusive Spirit of Boise coverage. We'll, have li we'll be live there each and every day starting on the 31st, so come say hi. To learn more and the schedule, just visit IdahoNews.com. Say, and our weatherman seems nowhere to be found. Oh, look, there he is. Sorry, I, I have to give you a little no, bit. <laughs> I was checking the graphic and I was like, wait, I have the old one plugged in. No, you're doing a lot. I was going to say, it's again, we have weather every 10 minutes to keep you updated. So <laughs> if you stay tuned in and you don't see Luke, just give it 10 minutes. You'll see him again. Yeah, yeah. you're working hard, especially with, you know, we have some record oh. temperatures heading our way as well as all of that smoke. So, yeah, take it away. Well, let's talk about this warm weather, though. I mean, I, I don't like hot weather, but we have to talk about it because it's, mm -hmm. what ha it's what's happening. That record-breaking conditions that we're talking about, that would be the 21st day of 100-degree temperatures, which would be unprecedented. Our record right now for the most days um, of triple digits in a year, set back in 2003, that was 20 days. We tied that yesterday with our 20th day of triple-digit temperatures, a 21st day. That's a new record. Living in a haze, well, we're dealing with a lot of hazy conditions just because of all the fires near Idaho. And then storms near the Snake River probably won't impact us. Right now you can see the sun not coming up yet, but a little bit brighter, 72 degrees in Boise. High temperatures for today, the hottest in the region, going to be 100 in Ontario. And then as you can see, our extended forecast, I'll jump out of your way. You can see 99 degrees and hazy today. Then as we go into the weekend, you can see it warms up a bit, but that low pressure system I talked about earlier, if you were with us then, that's what cools us down. You can see we'll be in the mid 90s, partly cloudy conditions on Monday and then sunny on Tuesday and Wednesday. Up into the mountains, you're dealing with more smoke naturally because you're closer to those wildfires. You can see 94 on Thursday, 
88 on Friday, things warm up into the weekend, but then that low pressure system cools things down. Mid 80s in the mountains, quite nice summer weather up in McCall. Yes, sir. Thank you, Luke. I think I also hear Ron O'Brien there. That means CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it on over to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. It's uh, good all the way around. So far, decent shape. No surprises. I-84, if you're getting ready to get out the door, our main flow of eastbound traffic in the mornings so far starting off pretty light. You can see even lower left-hand corner Eagle Overland traffic on the light side. That's uh, the same story with other routes, too. Again, one mile, uh, one lane getting by each direction on 10 mile, that Project uh, Victory. That intersection has been under construction for a long time. One lane each direction on 10 mile open, but Victory is still closed either side of 10 mile. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, the CDC changing things up after a new report. What they say they're going to focus on after several pandemic response missteps. And later, new COVID boosters may be available soon as officials try to get them out before the next virus surge. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 624 on your Thursday. Welcome back. A shakeup coming to the Center for Disease Control after a review pointed to several missteps in how it handled the coronavirus pandemic. Now, a report out Wednesday finds the CDC had become too rigid and too bureaucratic to act quickly. It specifically cited its analysis of data, the sluggish release of information to the public, and its confusing and sometimes overwhelming COVID guidance. We learned some hard lessons over the last three years, and as part of that, it's my responsibility, it's the agency's responsibility to learn from those lessons and do better. In the coming months, Dr. Walensky says the CDC, now they'll focus on getting information to the public more rapidly, developing a more nimble workforce, and addressing equity in health care. Well, the White House wants to speed up the timeline for the next round of COVID booster shots. Medical reporter Liz Bonet shares what that means if you haven't had a fourth shot. Hey there, everybody. The rapid shift of the variants has been a moving target for infectious disease specialists. The mission now is to speed up the delivery of these newly formulated boosters ahead of a potential late fall and early winter surge. The newest batch of boosters headed your way will include what 90% of people are getting sick with right now, according to the CDC, the BA4 and BA5 Omicron variants. It's going to be really important that people this fall and winter get the new shot. It's, it's designed for the virus that's out there. The U.S. has purchased more than 170 million doses of these Omicron boosters from Pfizer and Moderna. A fourth dose of the original boosters has been recommended for those ages 50 and older. Fewer than half of those eligible have had this extra dose, according to the CDC. So if you're young and otherwise healthy, it may be better to wait for these newer shots to be available this fall. The hope is that the newer vaccines will continue to keep most people out of the hospital, as it's been with BA4 and 5 infections now. Although there's a lot of COVID in the community, people aren't getting sick enough to get admitted for the most part. The shots could be available, according to the White House COVID-19 response team, in as little as three weeks. But by the time we can get them, we don't know if BA4 and BA5 will still be making us sick. I think we're hitting the peak on the BA5 wave right now, so the numbers haven't really gone up in the community over the last two weeks. They haven't gone down yet, but they're steady. You see, as kids head back to school and classes begin at colleges and universities, the hope is that an ever-evolving virus won't find so many new hosts that even a new and improved vaccine can't fight it. Now, if you do get a fourth shot with the current vaccine right now, the concern is that you won't respond to these newer formulations expected in just a few weeks, and that would mean maybe perhaps you're not as protected as possible as we head into a potential surge. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come on CBS 2 News, fights against wildfires here in Idaho are progressing this morning. Why the Moose Fire may keep the Salmon River Road closed for a while longer. 
And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 News. After all of your favorites, you can join Brent Hunsaker, Janae Ryan, and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. Nearly everyone uses one of these every day. This morning on CBS 2 News, keeping kids safe as they head back to school. Why one local district says they're not taking any chances. Plus, calls for and against censorship at our local libraries. Why some want certain books removed from the Meridian Library District. Plus, the Albertsons Boise Open tees off today. How this event could mean a ticket for the big leagues for players. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, right now it is 72 degrees in Boise. Coolest time of the day, best time to go out, get some exercise. But if you do go outside, you're going to note the air quality. It is hazy and we're in that moderate air quality category. When you get out the door, you can see temperatures are going to warm up and warm up fairly quickly, getting to about 97 degrees by 5 p.m. Looks like all the smoke and haze that we're dealing with should keep us off of triple digits, but we'll talk about what happens if we do reach triple digits. You can see a lot of clouds coming through as well. We're dealing with partly cloudy conditions all day with that haze. You can see some storms down near the Snake River, likely not going to be a factor in Boise. You could see a blip or two here and there, depending on where you are. And then your high temperatures for today, 98 in Boise, 100 in Emmett, 100 in Ontario. Up in the mountains, a little bit cooler, 89 in Stanley, 94 in McCall, and then over in Oregon, you can see 92 in Burns and 98 in Baker City. We're in for a very interesting day of weather, so stay tuned because we're going to talk all about it. Oh, thank you, Luke. It is 631 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look for you out there this morning. It's looking pretty good. Things are running smoothly. No reports of anything to slow you down on this Thursday. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. As school starts back up, safety, it's at the top of everyone's mind. And the Garden Valley School District, they're one of the few districts that allow staff to have guns on campus here in Idaho. And with the growing number of school shootings, they say this, among other security measures, is what's helping keep their students and staff safe. CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains. School started this week at the Garden Valley School District. And for Superintendent Randy Thompson, Safety is top priority. Well, just like we are in the business of educating our school children, we also recognize the importance of educating ourselves on the issues that are important in today's world. One of them is school safety. Since 2014, Garden Valley has allowed its staff to have guns on campus. The school board has adopted a policy that allows uh, the use of weapons on campus uh, to uh, defend and promote safety as needed. And with recent school shootings, the superintendent says they're not taking any chances. We recognize that from time to time there could be a threat to our school, to our students, our staff, or our faculty, and we want to be prepared to address that. The school has taken other precautions to keep their students safe, such as keeping their doors closed. We keep all of our doors secured and locked throughout the school day and monitoring all visitors that come in and out of the school. You actually have to buzz in, talk to receptionists, Welcome. How can I help you? and they'll give you the green light to actually go in the school. With nearly 300 kids K through 12th grade at the school, all students must communicate with teachers on where they're going after school. And teachers won't allow students to leave with an adult unless they know who they are. Randy says while nothing can ever really prepare you for a school shooting, they do their best to make sure everyone is safe. We feel the need to constantly educate ourselves on those things that we can do to ensure the safety of everyone within the walls of Garden Valley Schools. We do want to clarify that Garden Valley is only allowed firearms due to its proximity from police and other EMS services in the event of a worst case scenario. Well, a shortage of bus drivers impacting schools nationwide. Now many retired during the pandemic as online schools kept kids at home. 
Well, now they say better opportunities are pushing them towards jobs other than bus driving. Now I'm making more money here. I don't have to go back to driving. That's where the shortage came in. Less drivers also means more students and more routes for those drivers that are now left. For students, that means it'll take longer to get both to and from school. And school sports also suffering this semester. A shortage of referees may mean even fewer games. Refs say they're walking away from the job due to verbal, even sometimes physical abuse from parents after games. They're excited to be there, but they're always very heading out to the parking lot. They don't know who's going to come chasing after them. The shortage may mean changing games from Friday night to Thursday or Saturday nights when more refs are available. It will ultimately be up to schools to coordinate when they can and can't hold games. Turning to developing news this morning, a packed house last night for Meridian Library District's board meeting, all over censorship and the content of local library books. The Idaho Liberty Dogs, a conservative group, they want some books removed from the public library, calling them sexually explicit. Now here's some of last night's board meeting. The accusations that libraries are becoming a grooming space to indoctrinate children into the LGBTQ lifestyle. The fact that they put Captain Underpants on the list tells me that they are acting out of willful ignorance or just a surface level understanding of the material they're objecting to. Anyone familiar with Captain Underpants and calling that smut filled and pornographic is baffling. They're targeting a handful of books, plus the series just mentioned. Many concerned citizens spoke out against local government censorship. The board made no decision on the topic, though you can see other titles and more about the meeting. Just head on over to our website. Turning now to fire season, the Moose Fire still growing along the Salmon River. So now Salmon River Road closed between Spring Creek and Panther Creek. Crews say at least for two weeks. The, the fire activity has moved down in the last couple of days um, and it has approached today. There's a there's a, the first two structures in the bottom is getting close. But at this time, um, none of our resources have had to take any action of burning around or protecting those structures yet. The fire now burning almost 83,000 acres of the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It is 34 percent contained as of this morning. And closer to home, the battle continues to stop the Four Corners fire. That's in the mountains west of Cascade. The town isn't threatened, but incident commanders say that boaters need to keep out of the way of firefighting aircrafts that are scooping up water from Cascade Reservoir. The Four Corners fire is now up to 3,500 acres. Well, happening today, the Boise, the Albertsons Boise Open tees off now, the tournament. It's a chance to watch some of the best golf in the world and catch some live music. Now, the Albertsons Boise Open is basically a qualifier for next year's PGA Tour. It's one of three final events with a winning prize of $1 million. Nice little chunk of change. The top 25 earners at the end of the Corn Ferry Tour move up to the PGA Tour next season. Corn Ferry Tour is the pathway to the PGA Tour. It's really unbelievably stressful for these guys. It's, it's, it's their chance to get onto the PGA Tour. Not only can fans enjoy watching professional golf this weekend, the Boise Open also hosting concerts today, tomorrow and Saturday. Concert tickets, unfortunately, are already sold out, but there are still tickets available for Sunday's final round of golf. Look at it go. All right, this makes me want to say, what is it? Four? Isn't that four when they when they? Off. Okay, never mind. I'll, I was trying to do a joke, Luke. We, we never do mind. Have a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> we do have a lot of sports coming back, which is great. We, we have Steelheads coming up in about a month or so, Boise State coming in about two or three weeks. We got a lot going on, so that's all excited to be out. Or it's exciting, especially if you're a sports fan like me. I mean, I know I'm very excited for everything going it, it's on. It's true. He knows basically every stat, guys. It's a <laughs> lot of fun. All right. Well, it's going to be hot today, and many people trying to plan their weekend yeah. ahead. So, yeah, what can they expect? Well, you have to look out for the smoke, honestly, because we're living in a lot of haze today just because of how much smoke we're dealing with from the wildfires going on, the Moose Fire, the Four Corners Fire, the Wood Tick Fire, the Norton Fire. There's just a lot of fires in Idaho right now putting a lot of smoke into the atmosphere. So if you're trying to go out into the mountains, have some fun, you could be in for some smoke. Just something to note. Record breaking temperatures today. Well, that would happen if we get to 100 degrees. It wouldn't set the daily record, but it would set the record 
for how many 100 degree days we've had in a year. Previously, that record stood at 20 days. That was set in 2003. We tied that yesterday. So if we get a 21st day, well, we're in uncharted territory. Storms near the Snake River, probably not anything to worry about unless you are down near there. They could produce some harsh winds, apparently, of up to 50 miles an hour. You can see, look at the smoke here. We're just about in that red category. Even at parts of the day, you can see the red does move into Boise. That's just going to dampen our air quality, making it a lot worse. We're going to take a look at that. You can see 83. We're in that moderate category. And as the day goes on, we could even see it go into that sensitive groups category. Probably not into that unhealthy category, but just something to note. The air quality is not so great. You can see not too much happening over our satellite and radar. We do have a high pressure system that you can't see keeping a lot of weather out, but a low pressure system that will develop will cool us off going into next week around Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thank you, Luke. Yeah, some good information there. It's 6:40 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hey, Ron, how's it looking out there? Hi there. We've had uh, kind of a wave of uh, traffic coming through Garrity, for example, at times. Eastbound 84 volume definitely uh, picking up in some spots. A little crowding there east of uh, Garrity now and then. Kind of fluctuates. Same thing closer in. A little bit of heavy traffic. No real long delays or anything big going. And volume is starting to uh, increase elsewhere, too, away from the freeways. For example, Karcher Road in Nampa getting some uh, pretty consistent heavy traffic coming in, approaching Midway. And then plugs up again after Middleton Road to the Boulevard. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. All right, folks, my favorite part of the day. It's time for our question of the day. The question is nearly everyone uses one of these every day, but 20% of people haven't got a new one in over 10 years. All right, I'm going with hairbrush. What are you thinking, Luke? So I was thinking headphones, but I saw a lot of people commenting televisions. I'm going to jump on oh. that bandwagon. Yeah, no, if it's, I mean, in some cases, if it isn't, I mean, I think my grandpa used to say this and it's probably bad English, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes that's how it goes. Let's see what our folks at home have to say this morning. Will, a dishwasher. Oh, that's true, that's yes, true. a dishwasher. Say, especially if you have a good one. All right, let's see what else. Laura, a pillow. Oh, that's a long time for a pillow. Uh, uh. Okay, you do need to put a case on it, though. I'm kind of a germaphobe, guys, yeah. if you haven't gotten that already. <laughs> All right, let's see what other folks say. A shower head. Ooh. Nah, my shower heads break every <laughs> few years. I'm just like, I haven't had good luck with it. No, that does happen. You got to get a good one. These are some great guesses, guys. All right, we've also had, um, like I said earlier, people have said hairbrush along with me. What else did we have? Luke. Um, we had... Say it's an early morning, guys, as you remember. know. A couple more cups of coffee. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. A <laughs> pot of coffee. Like, eh, yeah, coffee know. pot. Uh, but yeah, no, if you think you know the answer, still 15 minutes to guess. We will read the answer right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS News, trying to cool off in heat islands, how some states are addressing some of their hottest areas. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 645 on your Thursday. Welcome back. A neighborhood in Pacoima, California, feeling much cooler thanks to a cool community project. They're trying to address heat islands. Joy Benedict explains. As the sun soaks the Southland, heat radiates from the asphalt, and many are searching for shade. But at this park in Pacoima, summer feels a little different. It's not too hot like it used to be. Let's much cooler. That's because the 10 block area surrounding Hubert Humphrey Park is part of a project to fight urban heat and those who live nearby can tell a difference. I think it's about a 20% more cooler here than there. That much different? Yeah, a lot. All the asphalt, the parking lots and the pavement have been coated with Street Bond, a solar reflective treatment. My feet do feel cooler. They do feel cooler, yes. You can definitely instantly feel the difference um, from the soles of your feet. Yeah. Melanie Torres is with Pacoima Beautiful. I think it's great. I, you know, Pacoima is one of like the largest hot zones in LA, so it's really nice that we were 
fortunate enough to be selected. The community was selected by GAF to be a cool community project. The roofing and waterproofing manufacturer picked this neighborhood to test out its product and see if they can literally lower the temperature over the course of a year. It, it limits uh, uh, the amount of heat and energy absorption into those hard surfaces. Jeff Terry is the vice president of sustainability. He says if they can keep the surface cooler during the day, our bodies and buildings won't have to work as hard to cool off overnight. Those buildings and homes have to keep working harder and harder. So what happens with that is you get increased energy use, you get increased carbon impact associated with that. This project actually started last month, but with one million square feet of surfaces now covered, we thought we'd put it to the test. It is 5 p.m. and still 93 degrees here in the city of Pacoima. However, this thermometer registers the street at closer to 130 degrees. However, if I continue to walk onto the now treated area of the asphalt, you can see that temperature drop significantly. And we've seen results of it going down by like 9 to 10 degrees already. And in this neighborhood where every home is an air conditioned, those few degrees can make a big impact on health and finances. We find other ways to kind of mitigate the heat, um, but there's not a lot of options that we have here in our community. Dust off your cowboy boots. The 125th Western Idaho Fair kicking off tomorrow. It runs through the 28th. Even better, opening day is CBS2 Free Fair Day. It's Free Fair Friday as well. You can get in free from noon to 2. All we ask is that you bring a couple cans of non-perishable food for the Idaho Food Bank, and you're in free. Just be there before 2 again this Friday. If you can't make it to the fair, you can also donate money online to help feed hungry Idahoans. Everything goes back into the community. We do have a link on IdahoNews.com. Yeah, might as well help out again our community if you're heading on down to the fair. Yeah, just one can of, you know, one can of soup, a bo box of rice, yeah, just whatever, whatever you can help. Just something simple like yeah. that. And even just going out to the fair is always a fun time. I mean, growing oh, yeah. up, it's always a fun time. And even as an adult, you're just having a good time. It's just, it's a good thing to do every year. Oh, it's going to be a blast, especially with those concerts. And I know mm. that it's going to be at least a little bit cooler over the weekend. I say a little bit like mid nineties. Yeah. yeah. Tell us, tell us a little more about that because I'm curious about the wildfire smoke. We haven't well, seen that yet. The wildfire smoke is really going to impact us more in the next day or so, at least here in the Treasure Valley. And then especially going into next week, it will be cooler with a low pressure system. I'll talk about it in a moment, but we're living in a hot, hot haze today just because of all the wildfires, the moose fire and the Four Corners fire contributing especially to that. If we hit triple digi digits today, that's the 21st day of triple digits this year, which would break an all time record. Storms near the Snake River, probably nothing to worry about unless you are down there. Right now in Boise, 72 degrees you can see. High temperatures for today in the area, 98 in Boise, 100 in Ontario, 98 in Mountain Home and up in the mountains, 94 in McCall, but then let's look at these temperatures a little bit more in detail. You can see the haze really playing a factor in the Treasure Valley today. A little bit tomorrow, but not enough to put the hazy graphic up there. Partly cloudy on Friday. Things do warm up in the weekend, unfortunately, but then going into next week, we have a low pressure system. So you can see 94, 93, and then 94 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So honestly, those are great days to go out to the fair if you weren't are, if you aren't able to go out this weekend because they are a bit cooler. And then up into the mountains, you can see hazy conditions for at least the next two days, 94 degrees and then 88 on Friday, warming up a little bit into the weekend and then cooling down mid 80s in McCall next week to start it off. Like the sound of that getting back to at least near normal. Take it. It is 650 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. Let's get a last check of what's happening out there from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Hi, Ron. Hi there. We've got a little more volume on I-84, maybe an extra couple minutes out of Canyon County towards 184. Nothing significant, kind of fluctuates. And looks like a crash on Chinden. Yep, we've got something going on. Boise Police with it. Chinden and Five Mile, but not any big delay. There are some uh, lane, there's some lane blockage there, and a little local holdup would be about it for eastbound traffic primarily, but not a, a big issue at this point. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn your dial to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates.
Still to come on CBS 2 News, a popular pandemic drink fizzling out while the sales of seltzer are going down. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 5.54. Welcome back. During the pandemic, hard seltzer saw a huge increase in popularity, but now there's something new on tap. Dina Demetrius explains. Um, apple pay, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Eddie Muchamel manages Village Market and Liquors in Los Angeles and says business boomed in 2020. During the pandemic, everything was selling like crazy. With bars and restaurants closed, Americans drank more at home, and sales of hard seltzer skyrocketed, even when people started socializing again. Like if I go to a party, it's usually Trulies and White Claws and then maybe some beers, but those are definitely the dominant drink of choice. Dozens of new hard seltzer brands have popped up in the past couple of years, but after a huge rise, sales are now starting to fizzle, down 10% this year. There's always a um, product life cycle. John Berg with Nielsen IQ says while seltzers remain very popular, another drink is taking up space at stores. Those shoppers that had been uh, trying hard seltzers are now trying the uh, cocktails. Canned cocktails contain spirits like vodka or whiskey, where hard seltzers are malt-based like beer. Sales for the ready-to-drink products are taking off, up 55% this year. We were really ready for this canned cocktail moment. Sam Calagione is the founder of Dogfish Head Brewery, which started as a beer company but has extended into canned cocktails. Dogfish is owned by Boston Beer. The company known for Sam Adams also makes the popular hard seltzer Truly. And now Truly is branching out. We've already announced that we're going to come out with a line of Truly vodka seltzers. So kind of playing in this interesting white space between what was a traditional seltzer and sort of a vodka soda uh, cocktail. Canned cocktails are creating buzz, but analysts say trends can shift as tastes change. Dina Demetrius, CBS News, Los Angeles. Americans finally catching a break when it comes to chicken wings. According to the Department of Agriculture, the average wholesale for a pound of wings fell from 180 or 168 in July. That's their lowest price since 2018. Now, analysts do predict that it may be short lived due to football and basketball season being right around the corner. Cheaper chicken wings is the best story this summer. <laughs> yes, we got one. All right. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. Nearly everyone uses one of these every day, but 20% of people have got, haven't got a new one in over 10 years. The answer? It was a mattress. A mattress. Oh, that checks out. All right, guys, we'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.